G'day and welcome to another edition of Hef's Homebrew. Well, today I'm going to be brewing up a dark lager. It's somewhat in the vein of a Schwartz beer, um, but I guess when you're using a kit, it's potentially not going to be entirely accurate in terms of the style guidelines, but uh, I'm going to do my best. It was about a year ago now that I would have posted up my video of Hef's Old, which was roughly a, uh, a two years old type beer and at the time uh, when I reviewed it I'm, I'm pretty sure that I was contemplating having another go but um, brewing it with a lager yeast. Uh, what I've decided to do after having a bit of a think about it um, rather than just reusing the same recipe but changing out the yeast uh, I'm in an attempt to create a beer that's more true to style. Uh, I have created a new recipe. It's somewhat based on the 44 Pilsner, which was the last uh, video that I put up in terms of homebrew um, with a few tweaks. So let's have a look what we've got. I'm gonna be using another Blackrock kit. I'm really happy with the quality that I get from Blackrock. This one is the Pilsner Blonde. Uh, it's not the export Pilsner that I used for the 44 Pilsner. Uh, I did want to use it again, but it came down to availability. So this was the next best thing that I could get. Uh, it should be somewhat similar, uh, a little bit lighter in colour, I believe, and a little bit less in terms of bitterness, but I think that'll be okay. So that's... Uh, 1.7 kilograms. Other fermentables, I've got 500 grams of light dry malt, 500 grams of dark dry malt. I'm also gonna throw in, this is a one kilo bag, but about 300 grams of dextrose. Uh, they're the, the fermentables. I'm also gonna cold steep some grains. So I've gone a little bit fancy here. Uh, let me tell you what I've got more complex than uh, than what I usually do I've got a uh, 150 grams of dark chocolate 150 grams of dark Munich 100 grams of Cara Munich 2 and 50 grams of Carafa 2 so hoping that's going to uh, impart some nice uh, some nice roasty chocolate coffee biscuity toasty type flavors as well as uh some dark color hops i've got uh 25 grams left of tetananga which i used in the 44 pilsner so i'll do a, a hop stand or a steep with those and then for the yeast, I was hoping to use Nova Lager again. I've been really happy uh, with the last two beers that I've done with Nova Lager. But again, unfortunately, uh, availability was an issue. So what I've got is two packs of W3470. Never used this one before. Um, it is a hybrid. It is uh, one of the most commonly used lager yeasts in the world I believe um, most people advocate that you you do use more of a traditional lager ferment with this one especially in terms of temperature and time but there is also uh, a growing push to say that you can ferment using this yeast at ale temperatures now I'm not quite going to go that far but I think I, I'm going to try to find a balance between the traditional and the new. Um, so I'll let you know more a little more about what I do with uh, the ferment later on in the video, I guess. Um, so that's it. That's how I'm going to go about it. I will uh, attempt to get a little bit of brew day footage, as I explained last time. Uh, when you're by yourself and you're not feeling filming with a tripod or anything, it's a little bit tricky. So I'll do my best. Uh, otherwise, I'll see you back for the review. Cheers. Okay, down here in the brewery, just a couple of things I realised that I didn't mention in the introduction uh, that you've just seen. First of all, I think I did say that the yeast, the W3470, is a hybrid. Of course, it's not a hybrid. It is a traditional lager yeast. 
the other thing I didn't talk about was the expected uh, gravity. So Brew Father's telling me that I should have an original gravity of around 1044 and hopefully getting down to 1007, which will give me an ABV out of the fermenter of 4.8%. Bottle priming, so we'll be looking at about 5.3% as the final ABV, which uh, would be really, really good. Also, just thought I'd give you a look. Uh, this is the grains that have been cold steeping in the fridge overnight. And uh, if you're a kit brewer, this is something that I highly recommend. It's one of the best things you can do to improve your brew. And uh, you can also be introduced to the absolutely wonderful smells that you get from brewing with grains. So, catch you soon. Okay, we've just put the rainwater into the digi boil in there not much to see we've also popped the, the kit yeast from the top of the can uh, chuck that in there as well so we'll boil that and that will be used as a nutrient and while we're waiting for that to come up to the boil we'll just measure out some of our other ingredients and make sure that we are getting ready to go Here we are at about 36 hours since pitching the yeast. We had signs, early signs of fermentation at about 12 hours. Nice solid Krausen forming at 24. And as I said, here we are approaching 36 hours. And you can see we've got reasonably vigorous fermentation going on. So very pleased with the way that things are going so far. All right, it is bottling day. Just thought I'd Give you a quick look at the way that I do it. As you can see, I use uh, just a, a very basic bottling wand. Bottles are all washed over the last couple of days and left on a bottle tree to dry. And then I use this fantastic contraption to sanitize the bottles and the caps. I just do a bunch at a time, throw in a scoop of dextrose, and then I'll fill them. Um, I'll do a few at a time, cap them with the capper, and then move on to the next slot. Once those ones are all done, then I'll uh, sanitize, prime, fill, and cap those ones as well. Uh, I'll give you a look at a sample um, in a minute, and, uh, and then after that, it'll, uh, we'll move on to the tasting. G'day. All right, here we are ready for the tasting on what I'm calling the Black Magic Dark Lager, which is a Schwartz beer. Um, I took a lot of clips along the way, but I'm not sure how much I'm actually going to include in the final video. So apologies if I do repeat something that was covered in a clip that I did choose to put in. Just uh, bear with me, please. So uh, original gravity was 1050 which was a little bit higher than I was expecting but uh, I'm more than happy with that 1050 uh, the fermentation schedule I didn't go directly down the traditional route but nor I've read some experiments where people have fermented with the 3470 yeast at warm temperatures and rather quickly I, I didn't go that far I kind of uh, adopted a hybrid model I guess so uh, I started off at 12 degrees, held that for five days, and then slowly started bumping up. So day six, 14 degrees, day seven, 16 degrees, this is Celsius, obviously. And then held it for five days up until day 13 at 18 degrees. And then I started a slow, gradual cold crash. So I went to 14 degrees on day 14. 12 degrees on day 15, 8 degrees on day 16, and finally down to 4 degrees, which is about as cold as my fermenting fridge will hold without going absolutely crazy, and held that for three days there at the end. So I was in the, in the fermenter uh, for a total of 19 days before I bottled. The final gravity was 10... 11 so abv out of the fermenter 5.1 percent 
I bottle primed with dextrose and then conditioned in the fermenting fridge at 16 degrees. I think that's everything I need to cover. Um, one thing that I did notice with the 3470 was pretty heavy sulfur aroma actually. Uh, fermentation started pretty quickly. I could see that we had signs at about 12 hours, good krausen forming at, at 15 hours, uh, and the air, airlock was bubbling away uh, within 24 hours or so. And uh, yeah, after a couple of days, I had a, a, a really heavy sulfur aroma actually, um, but that dis did dissipate after a few more days. Enough of that, let's crack open this long neck and see what it's like in the glass. Look, it's only been in the bottle uh, for about four weeks, which is short a shorter time than I normally like to do. But you'll find out why soon enough. There she is, as you can see, looks amazing in the glass. Really pleased with the way that it looks. Um, hard to detect on camera actually, but there is a little bit of light getting through down there at the bottom with kind of a, a mahogany shade, I guess, but generally very dark. And we've got a couple of fingers of really nice, thick, creamy, beige to tan head aroma. All right, lots of that dark malt coming through, quite heavy on the chocolate. Some roasted, roasty notes as well. Yeah, looks and smells fantastic. Let's see how it tastes. Cheers. Okay, there's a, a light to medium body, but probably leaning towards medium there's a nice uh, coffee type bitterness at the end it's a drying finish the, the first couple of bottles I tried at uh, two and three weeks respectively I was a little bit can, uh, not concerned, but it wasn't tasting quite the way that I was hoping it was going to taste. Um, there was still a bit of residual sweetness left in there. Uh, and I thought it was going to take an extended conditioning, amount of conditioning time. Um, but then I had one at four weeks uh, and it was fantastic. So I had a couple of, a couple of bottles in the fridge straight away and uh, of which this is one so the flavor look it's 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 pretty clean uh for a dark beer the the yeast is done really well um there's some dark roasted malts coming through it's not super roasty there's some chocolate there's a little bit of um there is a little bit of caramel um some breadiness there as well it, it's it's something that i find if you want to sit and sip and appreciate it then certainly you can draw out some complexities in the flavor but it, it's clean enough and crisp enough as well um with that drying finish that if you want to you know, pump through a, a couple in a session or smash down a schooner of it, then you could really easily do that as well. So I'd definitely, definitely brew this again. Um, I'm not sure if I would make much, if any, adjustments to the recipe, actually. I'm just... Just looking at it again now, 
Um, I'm really happy with, with that 5.6 ABV. I think that's great for the style. As I explained at the beginning, it was a reasonably uh, complex recipe uh, for something that's kit-based in terms of the, the malts that I used. I'd potentially throw in um, some roasted barley or something if, if I wanted to increase those roasted type flavours. Um, but other than that, I guess the other thing I'd be interested to, to know is to, uh, how it would go with Nova Liger. That was my first choice, but my brew shop didn't have it at the time. They only had one pack and I wanted two. Uh, but the 3470 did did a fine job. It it did take longer. I guess Nova Lager would have would have been done faster, but you get that. Yeah. Super super happy. Uh one of the best beers, if not the best beer that I've brewed without a doubt. What's next on the homebrew front? Well, we're in winter here at the moment and uh, with my last couple of beers I really found that with bottling and it's one of the disadvantages of course um, I found that my beers improved when they were kept at a constant temperature in the fermentation fridge so that was great for the taste of the beer but not great for my brewing because it meant that my fermentation fridge was tied up for long periods of time so I couldn't brew anything until I'd finished all or almost all of the previous batch but because we're in winter I actually only kept this kept kept these bottles in the fridge for four weeks and now they're out sitting in the crates in the garage taking advantage of the cool temperatures and I've already got my next brew on it's going to be ready to bottle in a few days. It is a, um, it's a milk stout with coffee and chocolate, and I'm using the Black Rock Oatmeal Stout as the base, uh, as the kit base. So uh, there will be a, a video coming out for that one as well, obviously. Uh, after that, I'm really thinking that I need to look at progressing my beers uh, you know I'm pretty happy with the way that the kits and grains are coming out um, but I want to try something a little bit more advanced so I'm looking at going one of two ways uh, considering doing a, a, a full extract beer using dry extract so doing a full boil with hop additions uh, and trying to calculate IBUs and, um, and and go through a proper hopping schedule. Uh, and the other thing that I'm considering is um, potentially still using a kit as a base, but doing a proper mini mash with some base malts to add to that as well. Um, just getting a bit more experience with the full, bro full brewing process. So we'll see what happens. Anyway, uh, this for me is a four and a half out of five. I really, really love it. I don't think uh, it's going to last very long. I'd highly recommend that uh, that you give it a go. Um, you've got the recipe, so it's all yours. Anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time on Hef's Homebrew.